Okay, let's take a look at this uh, MySQL utility here. This thing's fantastic. Uh, if we go to start, MySQL Workbench. I really like the modeling capabilities of this. It's really easy to use. And, uh, it's got kind of a nice desktop where you can go back and forth between synchronizing your database model and you can uh, forward engineer is what I like to do. So once I've got the entire database modeled, I've set up all the data types, then it's easy to forward engineer that and generate scripts that you can use to create your database. Uh, or you can just create individual tables. Um, what we've created is a Gurgle Dev database and a Gurgle Prod database uh, for development and production. So I'm thinking that the development database could be something that we're making changes to, working on. And then maybe we'll want to create a third database, which is going to be kind of a staging or waiting to be moved into production. So we'll lock that one and we can still continue making changes to the development, the dev database. And uh, of course, we're not going to make any changes to production. We'll just take, periodically when we do an upgrade, we'll just take the, uh, you know, in waiting for production database and migrate that into production. Okay, so see, this is really cool. It's got the data model here. So if we click on d the data model, for example, Okay, there's our model. So it opens up our database model. This is coming along real nicely. We've got the, the wineries, uh, grapes, appellations, and wines. Also this vineyards uh, table that we created recently. Uh, the other ones are kind of just uh, cross-reference tables. These are cross-references uh, for many-to-many -many relationships that we've resolved there. Um, but the great thing about this is you can just select any of these tables, right click on the table and click edit table. Whoops. Okay. So uh, here are, here's our Appalachians table and now we're able to make any changes to the, the name. We want Unicode, uh, okay, UTF-8, that's important because we've got some foreign letters, characters in our data. So we want to make sure we keep this at UTF-8 for all of the tables in our database. Okay, now if you go down here and you click Columns, this is nice. You can see the, the uh, foreign keys and the indexes uh, are identified in red. And uh, these are uh, not null values because they have to be linked to uh, foreign tables. Uh, this identifies the primary key which is ID Appalachians in this case. Now you can just go ahead right here and type in, you know, a new table name and give it a data type. By clicking the data type here, you can select from any of these data types. Or you can just, you know, if you pick Varchar, you can just type in, say, 14. Uh, for a 14 character, uh, variable character data type. And then you can assign it whatever uh, properties you want. It also has comments and things like that. You can right click on any uh, column and move those up or down in the list so that you can organize things nicely. Or you can just delete you know, this one that we just created for a demo. But this is real nice. You can do the same thing for any of the tables. Just right click on the table name. You can also right click on any of these uh, relationship links and you can edit the relationship. So then here you can change the name of the foreign keys that it's given you. And you can change the type of relationship, one-to-one, one-to-many, whatever it is. Whatever type of, of relationship that you need uh, to enforce the referential integrity of the different tables.
Okay, this is this is also real easy to print out. Uh, but what, what I want to show you here is if we go to the model, uh, rather the database, okay, and we want to go to Forward Engineer. So click the Forward Engineer button. And these are options that sometimes we need. We're not going to worry about those now, so we'll click Next. But we're going to export all 11 of these tables, okay? We could filter these if we want to, but we're just going to select all the tables and we're going to export them as a script, as a SQL script. Click Next, and there's the script. So you can, you can go down and you can see it, and this is going to generate our entire database for us, okay, on the server. So this script uh, goes ahead and systematically, you know, creates all of the keys and everything for all the tables we've identified in our model. So what I like to do is just save it to a file, Okay, and I usually have a uh, create gurgle dev. This is a good one. So we'll save it as a SQL script with a dot SQL extension and just call it create gurgle gurgle one dev. Okay, so then you can just cancel. You don't have to connect to the database. You don't have to synchronize in everything if you don't want to. You can just cancel out of this. We've already generated our script, and that's really all we need. So if we get out of here. And we go ahead and exit. We don't need to. We don't need to save any changes we've made here. But if we go to the uh, scripts now, if we go to database and then uh, SQL scripts, and we can see there's our create Google one dev SQL script, and there it is. And that that's going to create the entire database. Now, if we only want to make changes to uh, the model. And then we want to update a particular, you know, table. Say we made some changes to this table here. We want to update that particular table. We're just going to control C. We're going to copy this text, okay? We're going to copy that text out. And we can paste that in. I'll show you in a minute. We can paste that into the uh, the MySQL Workbench the SQL editor, we can run that script and it'll just update that particular table that we've made changes to the model to. So we have to keep all those tables updated with these scripts. It's a nice way to do it.